you know, we're all weary. We don't want to be crossed or misled or even, you know, worse. All the things we don't talk about, what we think could happen to us. So for those people that we spend time with and we allow to, to be in our life, we judge their integrity. How stand up is this lady? Can I go out the room and leave my pocketbook or do I need to bring it with me? Can I leave this person in the room with my man? Is he going to, is she going to try to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Can I trust this person around my kids? You know, you, you, you ask yourself these questions. You may not say it out loud, but we do dr- judge the uprightness, the structural and the, the uh, integrity of someone that you let come around you. Because you like to be able to predict how that relationship will, will turn out. If a levy one day is upright, the next day it's sitting on his side, and the third day it uh, it's crumbled, you know, it, it, it hasn't really lived up to what you needed it to do. And the same thing with a, uh, with a relationship. If I talk to you today and you're like, oh man, you're my brother, I love you. And tomorrow I'm like, screw you, nigga. Excuse my language. Damn it! Just it, it just got uh, it just got censored right there, right? <laughs> like, excuse the language too, because we usually we don't like to use that language because that could be very very hurtful to some people. You, you know, people of my background too. But I'm saying, you know, we also know that people talk like that, but we do have to be aware of the words we use. But um, my point was. You could be one way, turn around and be the other way, and it would confuse people. Hey, my baby. You know, you're like, whoa, you don't know. I don't know how to take him. One day he's Malcolm X, and the next day he's Tupac Shakur. (laughs) Well, actually, they wouldn't be that different. Uh, But that's another conversation. But the point is, when you think of someone's integrity, your ability to really have an idea of have some sort of boundaries... And I always try to tell this to my friends, and it's interesting because we've had some interesting time with my relationships. I always really try to approach my relationships like, hey, well, there's nothing really you can, there's no one single event that would ever be an extinction level event. As long as they don't hit the biggies. Like, I think we all got the biggies. Like, you know, and hey, for me, they in the commandments. Yo, thou shalt not steal. Uh, you know, all the big ones. Murder. You know, <laughs> but then, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm guilty of all the making up of the little rules that maybe that I don't communicate. But let's get back and go back macro. So how do we as people in a day and time when we have such differing viewpoints, political, religious, sexual, cultural, educational, I mean, we have so many different perspectives that, you know, zoom out from the one-on-one relationship that I told you how difficult it is to balance on multiple uh, axes. Think about people trying to get along with other people. How is How can I get along with the Democrats if I'm Republican? How can I trust those Republicans if I'm dumb, Democrat? Oh, man, I can't mess around with those Muslims. I'm Christian. Oh, man, I... I I definitely don't get down with those es- <laughs> those uh es- and I'm gonna mess this up. S I'll go back to that. How do I get along with the Mormons and I'm a uh Methodist? Es- es- you ever hit one of those words you're like, whoa, I guess I never tried it. <laughs> you know. So many people have difficulties in getting along with people different than them. How can we do that? Right? So I wanted to touch on two particular things. On a drill down interpersonal level, it's difficult having... Sometimes your energy does repel others. Does it make the other person bad? Do I, do I sit back and say, you know what? <clears throat> if I run into someone that my energy repels them. And sometimes you really try. I think sometimes... Both parties can try in earnest, but they just don't vibe like that, right? And, and of course, I don't think anybody would agree that this is the higher spiritual level of being, but 
Just to be real, like sometimes, you know, you might not find, you might get around, I've, I've been around people, they be like, oh man, I can't, I can't, I don't like her. She just, she's just too happy. You know what I mean? Or they're like, man, I don't really like, you know, he's kind of sneaky. You know what I mean? People, you know, we're also animals in a way. And I don't mean that, you know, we're mammals. So we have senses and you react to people sometimes based, you know, based upon their body language. They say 99% of, or a certain high percentage of communication is nonverbal. You might not like a person and don't even know it. It may be the way they look. And trust me, it doesn't, hey, there's black people that meet other black people. They don't, right away, they might not like them. It might be in the same socioeconomical group. They might just remind them about somebody when you was a child. Who knows? But sometimes your energy does repel others. So what do you do? Now, me being the everlasting <laughs> optimist, I always kind of believe, man, if it's organic, it'll work its way out. But just like that body of water ebbs and flows, you might run into a juncture where your energy is no longer at the moment compatible with a person that you have a relationship with. It's very easy. I could just sit down and drill, drill down. Oh, he just or she just. And I'm sure they they have more reasons than you. But nobody's wrong. Nobody's, you know, so it just ebbs and flows. And your your ebb may be ebbing while they flowing. It's just, it's just a period of time. And then sometimes you haven't seen somebody for 10 years. And you're like, oh, man. I'm so glad that I ran into you. But sometimes you just need the perspective of time. Things change all the time. And um, it's difficult on a one-on-one -on -one level. And I think the same thing applies in bigger groups. You know, do I have to hate you? Do we have to be on the other end of the spectrum if I like Trump? If I like Biden, do I have to be on the other end of the spectrum? Like, I don't get it. Like, you know, why are people whether they're Democrat or Republican, no matter what you are, why are people finding themselves in conflict? Why can't we agree to disagree? Why can't you have a position and I have a position without meaning to tear you up? Is that really living with each other? Are we really allowing each other to have an open and enough communication so that there is some sort of glue that can hold us together? Are we being structurally sound in our judgment in our relationships, in the integrity of who we are in those relationships? You know, it's, it's tough. And for me to come on and postulate and pretend that I know the answer. I think this this is a question that people could have asked themselves in 1776. In 1502. In 400 BC. I think man always wrestled with his relationships. And how he got along with his fellow man. And how groups of men and women got along with groups of men and women that were different than them. I think if we start to think about it, we can heal. I think if we allow sometimes just time, you know what? When Instead of us continuing on this trajectory where if I try to up what up you and you try to what up me and, you know, somebody's got to stop it. You know, where where does it go? You know, if we continue this where does it go? Like how 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 far if I convince myself that I had to one up you, would I need to go? And when would it stop? So sometimes you just gotta be like, you know what? Dang, this is like consistently not working. Like you know, you know, you have no malice. I mean, how how could this is one thing, how could you have and I think is the is is what almost God asked us. He said, How could you love God, which you've never seen? You know, even Jesus said that no man has ever laid his eye on the Father. You know, for those people who, we're not going to get into that. Because again, you know, 
everybody's. I don't want to be in conflict with anybody's viewpoint right now. But no man has ever seen the Father. So how could you love God who you've never ever even laid your eyes on and not love the person, your brother, who you see him every day, who you text every day, who you're, who you're in their ears somehow all the time? It's kind of inconsistent. So if you try and you see somehow that's not working, it's better to let there be an ebb and flow because sometimes things are said that you can't go back on. And if you see it going in that direction, why keep going? Just stop it. Just like, you know, just stop. That's the interpersonal part. Living with each other, we, we got to learn to communicate. When the communication goes, the glue goes, the structure of the edifice, the structure's integrity has been compromised and it starts to go. So let's learn to love. I don't know about it. I don't know how. And I know you don't either, but I know you want to. Let's just try, you know? you know. Give your man a little chance, man. It's good. It'll be cool. You know, it's all love. And uh, let's learn to get along. No matter who wins, we still got to go back to living with each other, right? This week, last month was a really good month for us. Man, we ended up dropping three joints, man. I got to work with three really talented men. Men of color. Talented, intelligent man. You took these, take these three men and put them all in the room. You know, Teron, carry on, carry on, uh, Chris, Chris Johnson, and uh, Charles Johnson. Uh, it's funny because you know, everybody be having their cool names too. So you, you be trying to regurgitate everybody's government, you be like. Walter Bradley, you know, you, know, you got you to gotta almost check the, uh, your little uh, notebook. But yeah, man, great brothers, man. And um, they did some really great work, man. You know, three great moments we had. One was uh, Kingdom. Oh, man, it's a great record. Tough joint. Um, we did a joint called Dad. You know, that joint is a really tough joint. You know, both of them streaming are all major streaming. I don't care if you do... Apple Music, you do Spotify, you do Tidal, <laughs> Pandora. I mean, it's like on all them joints. Look it up. Ill Butter, Nigel Greer, and then uh, you'll get to run into that joint I did with with uh, Teron and joint I did with Charles and Chris. And man, just making good music, man, you know? And um, it was just a really big thing, not because of... You know, people think it's only about the music. Think people think it's about the shine. I think it's about the execution. You know, we did it. So now we can look back and see how we did and improve it. So I'm going to leave y'all with a little bit of dad. It's a tough record. Y'all know I usually do 15 minutes, but, you know, I just feel like in the state of the world, we needed to talk about relationships. How could we live with each other? And um, this is dad. Come back, man. I'm not here to break hearts. Uh. I'm not here to break hearts. Welcome. I'm not here to break no hearts. But you're breaking mine. Yay! I'm not here to break hearts. Uh. I'm not here to break hearts. Welcome. I'm not here to break no hearts. But you're breaking mine. I came to visit, must admit I wasn't missing you then But now you're gone, I hope you're listening, I'm lifting this pen Get like Nadia, you will miss you when I'm gone So I'ma make the song to admit that I was wrong Tough relationship, beefing on some basic shit You said you love me, still we acting on some hate and shit Daddy, sorry, I ain't do this shit. You wanted me to struggle with you Now I'm keeping it a hundred with you I wish I could have made you proud Proud that I'm your son, but now I'm just a cloud and now I often frown, cause you are not a real. I listen for your voice, but do not hear a sound. Daddy, mommy misses you more than I do. So I tear into these beats like I do. 
If you got a dad, call him up and hug your dad. Love your dad, cause he the best dad you'll ever have. Yo, my father.